You're listening to Errol Parker and Clancy Overall, editors of the Batuta Advocate on Desert Rock FM. Welcome back to the Batuta Advocate Radio Show, recording live here in the Diamantina, downtown Batuta. Joined by myself, Clancy Overall, and of course, Errol Parker, editor at large. How are you, Errol? Good, mate. Very excited for this interview. It's been a while, but we've made it happen. Yeah, they said we couldn't do it. In fact, today's guest said we couldn't do it, not even a week ago. <laughs> but we've uh, we've come through the powers that be. We've gone above him. And today we're speaking to prominent children's author, James Tedesco. Uh, we went through his publishers of his new book. Yeah, who are also our publishers. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, the fix was in. He also plays a bit of rugby league. Thank you for joining us, Teddy. Boys, how are you? Thanks for having me. Well, good, thanks, mate. Look, it's um, we're, we're sitting here in front of uh, your, your, your new book you've released, Red vs. Blue, James Tedesco. Yeah. Uh, he previously released Hat Trick Teddy. Yep. A lot of people might not be aware, unless they've got kids, of course, about this other side to you. But, uh, you know, last Sunday, we see James Tedesco toweling up the proud people of Queensland on the football field at Suncorp. First time Queensland's ever been kept to zero on uh, in the cauldron. But meanwhile, there's this whole other side to James Tedesco. And How, how long have you been kind of uh, eyeing off this, this kind of uh, this career pivot? Yeah, it was sort of over the last year or so, Macmillan, the publisher, sort of approached me and asked me if, if I was interested. And yeah, I thought it was a good fit. I mean, I've yeah, I always had a pretty good connection with kids and sort of my story of growing up sort of out in country, out of Camden and playing footy, I'm uh, sort of made into a, to a good story. So yeah, I made two books out of it so far and yeah, who knows, could be more. But uh, yeah, it's been a really good reaction and, and overall view of how, how they've been and kids have been loving them. So yeah, it's been good. So can you tell us how in in between, you know, you've, you've won a couple premierships in the NRL, Teddy, you know, obviously seen a couple of origin victories. You've had, a you know, a whole number of uh, praise and you obviously lived the life of a footballer. You've represented your father's Italy in the World Cup. How do you sit down? In the midst of all this, you're also housemates with Victor Radley. How in the <laughs> hell did you sit down to find the time to write a couple of children's books? Well, I've moved I moved out of Victor's place, so that, <laughs> that, 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 that definitely helped. Um, <laughs> well, last year, we were in the bubble last year. And, yeah, right. Um, and last year, we were just pretty much just going to train and coming back home. So, honestly, there was a bit of time where I was just – I had a bit of time at home just to, um, yeah, think about other things and, and, and have time to do other things. And really, when if it was a normal life, I'd sort of be out doing – playing golf or, or socialising a fair bit, but because we – we really couldn't. Um, had, had a lot of time at home, so it was pretty. It's pretty easy to be honest. Had a yeah, had a t- time at home to sort of go over it and you know sort of go over my childhood and reminisce a bit and yeah work with the publishers on, on some stories and yeah it worked out really well. So while most of the uh, developed world are locked down, men are discovering how to make sourdough. What we've learned is if you take the Beach Road Hotel and the Royal Sydney Golf Course away from James Tedesco, you get two <laughs> children's books. <laughs> Royal Sydney, I haven't even been on there, but I don't know. That, that is a, that's part of my dreams to get on there one day. But which is how we got him over a barrel. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I'm actually a body, I'm a body dude in golf course, so yeah, we membership there hasn't, hasn't got much of a run. It's been sitting at home. Yeah, Beach Road Hotel, that was, that was definitely a hot spot for myself and, and Victor as well. But that was a yeah, loss. no, we just <laughs> using the time uh, that I could, I guess, to to make something worthwhile for the kids and family so i think yeah, getting a bit out of that and it was pretty cool to see you know the guy in my I was a kid in my sort of unit block you know he was he it was straight on to it straight away first day he was out he was knocking on my door wanting a copy came a signed copy then his, his dad was sending me photos of him reading it there every night and you know, stuff like that really yeah, it's really rewarding and you feel like you make a bit of a difference so teddy what inspired you to begin this project of writing was there a day where you were just like, fuck it, and I'll open a Word document and go ham? <laughs> um, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't really. It was more just, I guess, my time in the NRL. Obviously, the connection with kids have been, has been great, and I've, I've enjoyed you know, every moment whenever they're coming up asking for, for a photo or an autograph. Yeah, it really means a lot, and I think it was just an idea sort of coming to me from the publishers, and they sort of threw the idea of, of uh, childhood, you know, memories that I had and turned that into a book, turning into a story that the kids could really relate to. And I think the the messages, I guess, that were big for me was for kids to dream big and 
to chase their dreams. And I guess if kids can read that and relate to how it started for me, just a, just a young kid playing footy out, out in his backyard and he's 250 acres building building posts out in his backyard and had a dream to play here yeah, in the NRL one day. That they, those kids can relate to that and to see where I am today. I think it's massive that yeah they can sort of see see their idol and and try to build that one day. You you talk about you know chasing your dream and it's um quite often rugby league players or athletes in general say you know follow your dreams and you kind of think well you know that's all well for um Usain Bolt to tell us to follow our dreams <laughs> as the fastest man on the planet. Yeah. But I, I look at this quote from your father John Tedesco I believe is that your old man's name. Yeah, that's Johnny. Yeah. He said, James couldn't even make the junior rep squad for West when he was 14. And from then on, he's always sort of scraped in. But once he makes those teams, he goes on to finish as the best player. I guess you saying following your dreams actually is quite authentic. And it actually it does come from an honest place. Um, how have you found that from being, you know, the, um, the fringe rep player out in southwest rural Sydney to being, you know... Oh. James Tedesco from the Sydney Roosters. <laughs> have you felt yeah. that? Have you felt that transition in the last ten years? Yeah, I Dad loves telling, telling telling those stories. To whoever, <laughs> whoever I listen to, <laughs> I, I always found myself not too bad when I was a kid, but he sort of <laughs> takes me down a bit. <laughs> it keeps you. It but, keeps um, you honest. <laughs> there, yeah, there was times, I guess, during those ages where kids were were going through growth spurts and then getting a lot bigger than me, and I was sort of really small when I was a kid, and I mm-hmm. didn't. Didn't hit my my uh, growth spurt till about seventeen. So yeah, there was that. Like, as a kid, I was pretty fast and had the, a bit of skill. But then, as a, that 13, 14, 15, I sort of got overtaken a fair bit. And then, as yeah, Dad said, I was sort of struggling to make rep teams, and yeah, I was sort of scraping through. But yeah, I think just always had that hard work uh, mentality. And yeah, thanks to Dad, I was in the, I was in my backyard every, every afternoon, sort of practicing my my footy skills. I had two hundred acres, I had footy posts, had like a passing little circle. So he sort of made all those things for me to sort of work on my, my skills. And, yeah, I just love sport and I love love footy. So I always uh, wanted to, to do that as a uh, – to, to play in the NRL and I uh, always had dreams of playing Origin and play for Australia. So I always had those dreams. But, you know, I had to work really hard to sort of, sort of get to where I am at the moment. And, and even when, when I came into NRL, I debuted. I sort of had a lot of injuries and I sort of – I had a lot of setbacks, and I was sort of just still had that hard working mentality to get back. That was my next question, Teddy. You kind of uh, hit the ground in the NRL in in West, um, you know, in a club that didn't make the finals yeah. your entire time there, mm. and you were mm. plagued by injuries. Uh, was mm. there ever a point where you were like, okay, maybe this teaching degree is the uh, is the immediate thing for me? Oh uh, no, that was still that was still way way back. I didn't want to. I still had a lot of fire and mm-hmm. passion to, to to play. NRL successfully and um, yeah, as I said, the start of my career was definitely a rocky road. I think I had yeah, pretty much four or five surgeries in three or four years when I started and I was I never really had many injuries as a kid. I had none really. So when I sort of came into NRL, it was a bit of a shock having you know ACL, then broken kneecaps and uh, ankle surgery and all these different things that was sort of a bit new to me. But yeah, I guess I guess a big thing was about that, the the mental, mental toughness that I've, I feel like I've really built and really grown over the years, especially in the NRL. I think you need that. But, yeah, just coming back from those tough times and overcoming those hurdles and, and becoming bigger and better and stronger from that. Well, on your way to the NRL, you almost ended up at the Dragons. Do you wake up every morning and thank your lucky stars that you didn't end up there? <laughs> no, that was a good thing, I can. But um, that was, uh, yeah, I was, I was coming through 20s and they sort of had a, had a big offer for me, but... Oh, you know, I hadn't really done much. I was only playing twenties, and I had all my friends at the Tigers at the time. So, you know, when I was a kid, I was at the Tigers. I thought that'd be my career. I'd stay there. Had all my mates there. We're all coming through together at the same time. It's gonna be that was gonna be me. But yeah. so much, so many different things happen in the NRL career. I think you know the only one that's really still there is Brooksy and Nufa out of about ten of us that yeah right you know, started all through the Tigers at the same time. And that's just uh, you never know. I was gonna go down the camera at one stage as well. Those. So many things that, that talk, happen in, in talk at Canberra. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you could have been there in the premiership window, but you know, it was it it, it all worked out well. That the Sydney Roosters, you kind of, uh, I mean, I guess you kind of had a good little uh, glow up there. You you got to play yeah, with found, Sonny Bill, I guess, uh, when you first come over. Was that the? Yeah, I found my feet. I guess at, at the mm. Roosters a fair bit. I think a lot of it was down to Robbo and, and the coaching staff there, and just the club in general. I mean, yeah, you look at the players that have 
that were there at the time. It was obviously Cooper came at the same time as well. We had Boydo, Friendy, Orbo. Um, yeah, Sonny, Sonny came at one stage. So we had a lot of quality players there and, 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 the, and the whole club itself definitely, yeah, made me into the player I am and yeah, can't thank the Roosters enough for that. And it's a pretty good place to live, I guess, as well. Yeah, yeah, Bondi. Uh, sounds I've, I've heard it's nice. I've seen you down there, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the grand final weekend. We're always down. Probably won't be down this year uh, with the Bronx. <laughs> no, 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 no. And actually, no Queensland teams will be taking us to, uh, to Sydney this uh, this grand final weekend. But with the uh, you know you you kept an education degree trucking along. You finished that in 2016. Mm, yeah, it t- took me about seven years. Yeah, I mean that, that's still in terms of uh, part-time study. That, that's not that's not a bad turnaround. Was anyone in your ear for that, or is the NRL making sure you guys are also skilling up outside of um, yeah outside of football? Oh, I sort of yeah, I started it out of school. So my first school I was seventeen, so I st- still had I was only playing twenties a year after that. I was only eighteen, so I had a, I was only part-time tw- oh twenties in the afternoon, so I could do a full year of. Of uni, so I got that done, and then the next year uh, I was straight in the first year, but I did my ACL, so I could do another full semester of the degree. And then I had about um, it was a three year degree, so then for the next five years, I was pretty much just doing one subject at a time. And to be honest, after the first two years, and I was playing NRL, I was pretty, pretty over it, but you know, I stuck to it, and I was, I was glad I could finally, you know, get a degree at the end of it. But yeah, it was more just on me, I think. I, when we finished school. A lot of my mates did the same degree, and they, um, a lot of them went down to Wollongong. A few were in Sydney as well. But, yeah, it was sort of what we wanted to do as PE teaching, and none of us are doing that now, but that was what we wanted to do yeah, when yeah. we finished school. When it comes to this, um, I'm, I'm reading through your books, and I've, I've had a look, and, and it's quite interesting. You kind of tell the story of rugby league from definitely a, uh, a junior level where you've got old mate that works, uh, spends the weekends in the family's Lebanese restaurant. You've got, you know, <laughs> you've got your own Teddy story with Nonna, and then you've got the Aboriginal PE teacher. And, you know, it's real Southwest kind of Sydney yarn. How do you feel rugby league uh, kind of grabbed you as a kid? You know, because mm. that's the big thing that rugby league's well known for, particularly in the Western suburbs, is the grassroots program. You know, you're a. Italian kid from southwest Sydney in kind of rural southwest Sydney, you could have played soccer. You could have played anything. There was a big push by the AFL. How did they catch you? Yeah, when I, so I started soccer when I was about five. That was my first year. All my mates were playing soccer. And it's funny in the story. So all my, the four mates or five mates are having that story, they're all real. And they're the, my mates who I grew up with and I'm still pretty close with today. Like had a, yeah, we had the good diversity there and we all – Ended up playing footy together, but um, yeah, I played soccer first, and then moved to footy. And I was like, I want to give footy a go. So all of our mates went and played footy together, and it just sort of built from there. That was the sport I loved when I was a kid. I loved watching it. I was a I was a Roosters fan as well. Our same colours, uh, and we wore for kin, and red, white, and blue. So I was just sort of got yeah. drawn to the Roosters, and that was my team I supported. And yeah, it was just I don't know. That's just the love of the game. I just enjoyed it the most. I played I sort of played all sorts of sports and. When I was a kid, I played you know cricket, touch, played union. I think to tens to thirteens, I was playing league on Saturdays and then union on Sundays. So um, I was a pretty active kid and and loved sport. But yeah, I think it, I don't know, just the enjoyment of playing footy with my mates was the thing I loved the most. I loved watching it on TV and yeah, that's where it all sort of started. We never we were at school, we'd play at lunchtime or recess and yeah, that was just what all our mates wanted to do. We wanted to, we loved footy and wanted to. Wanted to always play it, so yeah, I think that's just how I grew. I went to St. Greg's as well. Obviously, that was a big, big footy school, and um, you know, guys like Chris Lawrence when he was near seven, he was debuting for the Tigers, and yeah, right. that was sort of guys you sort of look up to and think, oh, I, mean, I wouldn't mind you know being that guy one day. And, yeah, um, yeah. You did grow up though, I guess, watching a dynasty forming in Queensland. Was it, you know the, the particularly uh, the pundits right now? In, in Fox Sports and Channel 9 and the Daily Telegraph, they've got this narrative that, you know, this uh, this new blue wash, this new uh, this new New South Wales blue, the baby blues, the Ferraris, they're the kids that grew up watching New South Wales get flogged every year and, and, they, and they wanted to, to return pride to the blue jersey. Was that how it was? Is that how it was? Or you were, you were, you were more interested in getting into the NRL? Or? Oh, well, I remember, yeah, as a kid, like every year, um, you know, we'd – be hoping for New South Wales to win. Even some of my mates would 
I've turned to Queensland because they always they they always win. And as a kid, you see the team that's always winning, and they just start supporting them. So that was that was the debate that went on sometimes when that when Origin came around. That some of our mates would just turn and go for Queensland because they'd always win. So we, <laughs> Freddie actually brought that up. That's what that's what was happening. Kids were changing and going for Queensland just because they, they were used to them winning and wanted to go for the winning team. So um, yeah, Freddie, yeah, he actually he brought that up in 2018 when we. When we came in, I think it was 11 debutants, and it was more just about yeah bringing a lot of pride back to New South Wales and getting everyone back behind us because the support was pretty low at the time. And as I said, yeah, kids were just going for whoever was winning. So uh, Freddie made it a, a big thing for us to, yeah, to get that pride back in the jersey. And um, obviously, we won 18 and 19 last year was was disappointing, but yeah, there is a pretty special feeling about, about this team because there's so many good players and the way we've you know won the first two games, it's um, yeah, there's a big thing coming, I think. It's, it's going to be an interesting uh, next couple of decades for rugby league because as we're seeing now, the rugby league is getting the best share of talent of, of young people coming through. You know, you get guys like Crichton and uh, Cameron Murray who mm. could have easily played uh, Wallabies, mm. you know, 10 years ago. Even you, Teddy, I'm sure, you know, 10 years ago, the Wallabies would have been looking <laughs> for you, even though you uh, you went to a rugby league school and you were kind of, you know, well, just um, obsessed with it. I think the, the, the pathway just for rugby league is just so, so much better. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I don't know, like, the rugby. I mean, there's so many great rugby schools. Even Joseph Sawali for us, he was he playing for the rugby school. And then, yeah, I just think the pathway for the rugby league is just so much better. I don't, I don't know who, who's... Know why that is, but mm. well, I feel like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And the union, I don't, I don't know. What's, it just seems to be sort of yeah. fading away a bit. A lot of the talented, yeah, guys who are playing school, school rugby are sort of getting touted by by the rugby league clubs. And I think that's a great because we want all the best players playing together and against each other. I think if we're gonna we're gonna add new new teams as well in the next you know five five or so years, we want. We want all the best talent against each other. Yeah, but they always kind of seem to end up at the Roosters. But like, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, can you just give us like a little bit of an insight of what the culture's like there? I mean, because it's always like you know they always seem to get their man at the Roosters. Mm. And people yeah, seem, people seem happy there as well when they get there. Yeah. yeah, I think it's just how the whole whole clubs run. I think, but all the people that are involved in the club, there's no there's no egos, there's no no butting heads. Everyone's just on that same path to be successful and there's sort of no excuses for not being successful so yeah I feel like you know once you when I when I came to the club everyone's just so welcome you get all the players everyone's it's hard to sort of describe because it's a feeling and yeah and you, you definitely get that feeling when you when you come into the club we bring so many yeah, new, new players new young guys in especially this year we brought you know Sammy Walks and Sawali who were 17 and 18 years old but they've they've come in and felt comfortable and, and played some great footy for us so it's all about yeah just making sure everyone's on the on the same path and that same goal to, to, to be successful and you know, we work hard at training and yeah, it's just a it's just a, it's just a good feeling. So, Teddy, do you want to um I know I know you're a nice guy, but do you want to compare <laughs> the culture you're feeling at the at the Sydney Roosters and have done since you arrived and won two premierships back to back, which I'm sure the the feelings that's always been love there. <laughs> compare that to um the club you started with in the shape of uh West yeah, Tigers. That's, that's, what was the feeling there? <laughs> that's, that's, I don't want to compare. I don't want to compare. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had my mates with me. That's all I'll say. <laughs> At least I had my mates with me. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was good fun. That's all I'll say. Now, what does it feel like, back to this new dynasty that you're all building in New South Wales, which, uh, you know, it, it hurts our feelings as proud Queenslanders, but, um, you know, it's it's good to see. When Origin's good, rugby league's good, and, you know, yada, yada, yada. yada. Um, yep. That's as positive as I can get about the last couple uh, Origin <laughs> matches. Tell us what it feels like to feel this kind of dynasty growing, because I kind of there was a moment there where it was like Cleary, Tedesco, Dravojevic and then Latrell on the outside. Like, no one's going to stop a try from being scored in that exact scenario. <laughs> and I saw that quite a few times over the last uh, month. Mm-hmm. Do you guys feel that coming through now? Like, Because even when you look at your second strings, you're like, all right, we've still got so much talent here. Yeah. And, 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 it, and it is reminiscent of the, you know, the big three at Queensland mm. uh, with GI and all that talent that was getting around there. Thurston, yeah. what, what's, mm. it, what's it feeling like? What's the feeling in the camp now? Yeah, it's it's definitely confidence. I think I think that confidence comes from just all those guys 
playing really good footy for their clubs, and then and especially all the Panthers guys as well. I mean, they they come in a lot of them and they played Origin before they played one a few few games, but they bring that confidence in um, just from how good they've played at club level, and everyone in our team is at the top of their game, and it's it's pretty cool to be amongst that because you just know if you do your job, then everyone else is gonna do theirs, and it's gonna all work pretty well. But the big thing was probably just getting everyone connected and on the on the same page and it's it showed it i mean we came into camp and we got really close in the first you know, week and a half and then we went out and played like that so it's it's cool to be a part of i think yeah as you said as well we've got so much depth as well that if someone goes down we can sort of bring in a guy who's also playing some really good footy yeah. so um yeah like you said the the queensland team in that era obviously we across that team they're all full of champions and i think uh, if we can keep this sort of group together by the time we all finished and uh, it could be something similar to how Queensland build that. Yeah, no, it's good football you're playing, Teddy. I will say that for sure. Now, I want, I want to talk about this new world we're living in in the rugby league where it's either a nail-biter or it's a blowout. Um, mm. Obviously, uh, you've experienced both of them with the Sydney Roosters in the last couple mm. rounds. Uh, mm. how, how does it feel? Do you remember playing – do you remember football feeling like this before you were in the NRL or is this a – is this a wild new world you're yeah, living in? It's, it's different. It's definitely different. I think there's not much of that grind footy yeah. that we're used to, I think. And that was what sort of won us um, premierships in 18, 19, where we just yeah. grinded out wins from our de- defense, really. And then, yeah, it's just it's just a bit different. The momentum shifts really quickly in these new rules and in these games, and that's really hard to, to get back, And mm. especially if there's a tin bin or – yeah, it's just not not free flowing as much as you know, we're sort of used to. So it's it's different. I don't know. I don't know what the solution is, but we've sort of yeah made some made some changes, and we keep trying to change it on the run. And sort of, I feel like it needs to be you know a long process of thinking all out and and, and going along, and comparing with our players what what's best and what's not. Whereas sort of there's just been changes on the run, and we're not really involved with them. I feel like the Roosters are the club that's going to be able to learn these new rules and learn how to play them. Mm. It's a quite a, you know, as a club, you, you, you know, the Roosters are well known for being able to adapt to whatever, whatever's going on in the game. There will be the same clubs that just try and play that same old footy they always played and they'll get the same old results we're seeing. Yeah. Um, but I, I do yeah. feel like the Roosters um, are going to be able to uh, figure this out and you've got the coach. Yeah, it's just, it's just been a, obviously the injuries and, and, and the guys retiring. It's been a, it's been a pretty tough year for us, you know, and we can't use that as an excuse, obviously, but we haven't missed a lot of leaders. And obviously, um, you know, over the past, you know, we had three guys retire, you know, Kiri, Lindsay with ACLs, and you know, we've had a lot of young guys sort of come up, but Bradley's been suspended for the whole year, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I will not change my style of tackle. <laughs> we love you. I just hope, he, I just hope, he, hope he's just... Stays on the field for the rest of the year because we need him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll continue to work hard, and I know we'll, we'll we'll have a good end to the year. Yeah, just as long as you don't have any more house parties <laughs> in the NRL. But um, actually, That's a costly costly yeah, house party. But if that happened at the Roosters, you know, how do you think Trent would <laughs> react? Like, it, it just wouldn't be pretty. No, would you just you know? Try and move up to the Titans or something, just just to get away. (laughs) Yeah, I I don't know what how that would go down. Nick Nick and Robbo were probably in a room with Nick and Robbo sitting there, and just be would be. You get a smack on the bomb. Um, (laughs) Teddy, I want to talk about playing for Italy just quickly. That's always a a bit of fun when that comes around Mm. in the NRL. Everyone gets to kind of represent their family, uh, you know, their Mm. ancestry and their heritage. What what's that like, and and is is that a completely different energy when you've got a team mostly of NRL players who've all got a <laughs> yes. nonna, uh, and you've you've got this you know passionate European feel to your your rugby yeah, league football. It was, it was it was really cool actually. So I played in thirteen at the World Cup and played in seventeen as well for Italy, and yeah, it was it was pretty cool. We had actually got like we had to, had to have four full Italians in our team, guys that had just played in Italy. Yeah. So they were in our squad, and half of them they could just speak Italian. They were broken English, but <laughs> <laughs> they were they they weren't they weren't the greatest. But they were, it was great to have have them around and you know, learn learn stuff. Because I can't really speak 
that great Italian, but mm. you know, learning off guys like that. And every night we'd, it's funny, we'd have dinners and we just have waters and they'd be complaining, where's the red wine? We need, we need some wine. He <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't, can't eat with water. I was like, oh, I don't know, we've got to play in two days, I don't think. <laughs> but um, no, it was really, it was cool. I mean, my, my nonna was so proud just to, to see me. I'm wearing the, the Italian jersey and singing the anthem. I mean, she, yeah, I think that was a, her proudest moment and um, to see how yeah, proud she was but to represent. We actually, we went all right. I mean, uh, it's 13, we went pretty well. 17, we, we weren't that great, but mm. Minnie was leading us around. It was cool to play with him, one of the guys I sort of looked up to as a kid. So, yeah, yeah it was cool. Yeah, yeah, Minicello. Actually, there was a fair bit of talent and there's a fair, fair bit more Italian talent coming through yeah. too. Um, it should be mm. interesting whenever they decide to do the next one. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Uh, hopefully this year, but who knows? Mm. It, it's, it certainly won't be as uh, well organised as the Olympics, and even that's not that well organised. So we'll see. <laughs> there'll be a, there'll be a rugby world cup soon enough. Um, yeah. Now, what's the plan? Do you reckon it kind of looks like you've got some sort of kind of five year plan for after footy? Teddy, you've got, mm. you know, you've written two two kids' books. They're illustrated mm. here by Heath McKenzie. It's great. Um, you've actually got photos. I'm, I'm going to have to put these on Instagram, the photos of a young Tedesco. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're uh, good throwbacks. Right? <laughs> yeah, good throwbacks. I mean, prior to the book and just in general, what what was the plan? You you want to get into teaching or um, um, what are you uh, thinking? No, I want to be still involved in, in footy somehow. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I enjoy sort of helping – Younger kids, even even the young kids that have come through, enjoy sort of teaching them, at, you know, especially about fullback and yeah, you know, sort of coaching that sort of stuff. So I don't know if if coaching could be on the cards or yeah, something still involved in footy. But yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't really gave it a, a, a full think yet. But something around footy, I could see myself. Yeah, it's really, something with kids or teaching or coaching or something around those, those lines. But again, I'm not sure what that fully looks like. But see how we go. And what's what's the go out there in in Camden? You're a couple hundred acres. Are you, are you from a, like a horse family? Is that is that the nah, guy out there? Yeah, cat, cattle. So yeah, um, right. as mum mum grew up out there, dairy farmer. Her dad was dairy farmer, and then um, yeah, we moved out there and sort of built a house out there. And dad dad had flowers. We were selling, doing flowers for a bit there, so we'd sell them at the markets. And then sort of did beef cattle. Now we're sort of just yeah. Yeah, just runs cattle around there and beats them up and, and sells them. So that was some of my childhood running around with with the cattle, yeah, rounding them up. I wasn't very helpful. I don't know, Dad would be, <laughs> Dad would get pretty annoyed at me sometimes. Me just standing around while he did everything, but I was, I was more just the chaser. Just yeah, go get yeah. Run away. Well, having grown up on a dairy, have you ever broken a bone? Uh, no. There you go. No, see, pretty- see. <laughs> if you're raised on milk, you don't break your bones. <laughs> easy as that. Well, that, that, that. Now I have though. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Break one going up, but contact sport. Yeah. Well, that's what you said. You didn't 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 get any injuries until you you started playing in the NRL. That's, right, that's, right. that's on that. Good- I did. I did- I did ride a red white into a barbed wire fence. So <sighs> was, um, that's a shocker. <laughs> that was making it tougher. <laughs> well, there you go. We've got you got you got Addo Carr and White and and Luttrell on their ringers western with their big <laughs> with their big stets and hats and I think the real cowboy in the in the blues side is actually James Tedesco. Oh, they didn't invite me. Invite me. I've got my horse. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll send you some kit, mate. We'll send you some uh, Batuta outfit as a tie. You can you can rock that. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, there's, there's there's one more match in the uh, 2021 State of Origin to come. Uh, this is the game that Queensland will be playing in New South Wales, uh, providing that all goes ahead. So, I mean, things are looking good for you, Teddy. And you've got this young talent coming through with the Roosters. So it should be – you've got some interesting football to come as well. Mm. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited. I think, yeah, this, this game three will be pretty cool. I'm hoping just – um, we can be in Sydney and all our friends and family can come. I know they've, no, mine haven't come to either of the first two games, and I don't know what's sort of what's going to happen with this lockdown down here. But it'd be great to sort of yeah, lift the shield in front of uh, all the friends and family, and um, yeah, we want to make it three 0 obviously. So mm-hmm. big, big job ahead, and uh, yeah, big, big end to the year for the Roosters as well. We've got a bit of a challenge ahead of us, but we're excited for that. Well, all the best to you, Teddy. We, um, you know, we're we're impressed. You, 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 you're a published author. You're a you're a premiership winner, and you are looking pretty good for a for a three match blue wash in the Origin. So um, thank you for joining us, mate. I know you're busy, 
and it's been great to yarn. We'll uh, we'll have to get Thanks, a schooner boys. at the beach road yeah. next time we're down. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can appreciate it, boys. Schooner yeah, of water, maybe a red wine. <laughs> <laughs> a schooner of red. <laughs> <laughs> On us, Teddy. All right, Thanks, mate. Perfect, perfect. All right, thanks, boys. See ya. I'll see ya.